Well, greetings, everyone. I'm Jeff Shaw, the chair of the Atlanta Commercial Board of Realtors 2020 Million Dollar Club. Well, obviously, this is not the aquarium and this is not the Million Dollar Club event that so many of us work so hard to put together this year. But the Atlanta Commercial Board of Directors made a very difficult decision, but we all agreed that it was the right decision to cancel the event for tonight. So we are here at the Atlanta Commercial Board of Realtors Center. And while it's not quite as exciting as the Georgia Aquarium, we feel that it's very important to pay tribute to our members' achievements. That's right, Jeff. I'm Heather Lamb, Jeff's co-chair for the Million Dollar Club event. And since we're losing the opportunity to celebrate together and congratulate everyone in person, we thought it'd be fun to do it virtually together. So we encourage you to grab your favorite beverage, prop your feet up, and join us for this special presentation of the 2020 Million Dollar Club as we highlight the awards this evening. So let's start with some pretty incredible news. The 2020 Million Dollar Club set an all-time record for production this year, coming in at over $35 billion. And that's an increase of over $4.5 billion after a record-breaking 2019. Both Heather and I have so many people to thank tonight, but we need to make sure that this is brief so we can focus on our awards. First of all, I'd like to say how much I appreciate all of the support and the leadership from our board of directors. I'd also like to say how grateful I am to the entire MDC committee. There is a ton of work that goes into the compilation and the auditing process, and we had a terrific team. And I'd like to give a shout out to all of our past presidents of Atlanta Commercial Board of Realtors. Each one of you have put so much into this organization throughout your careers, and it's because of your leadership that we feel like reaching out to our members in this short video is the right way to move forward. And speaking of presents, I'd like to give our 2020 Atlanta Commercial Board of Realtors President, Jeff Pollock, a few minutes to address our membership. Good evening. I'm Jeff Pollock, your current ACBR President. Thank you for joining us online tonight as we transition from our previously scheduled event in person. As a past chair of the Million Dollar Club, I know how much work this event takes. And believe me, I was very much looking forward to celebrating with each of you and handing out some prestigious hardware. One very important group that I have to thank are our annual sponsors, the Atlanta Business Chronicle, Business Environments, Bridge Investment Group, and the Georgia Power Company. Thank you so much for your loyal support and all that you do for the board. I'd like to also thank our event sponsors for this evening. Our platinum sponsor, Ackerman and Company, who has been a loyal sponsor of this event for many years and who has stuck with us as we've transitioned. I'd also like to thank our other sponsors who are also sticking by our side, Industrious Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, graciously sponsored by Bridge Investment Group, Piedmont Center, an investment of the Ardent Companies, Resurgence Plaza, Atlanta Office Interiors, and Lanier Parking Solutions. I would also like to thank our co-chairs, Heather Lamb and Jeff Shaw, who have pivoted under these circumstances and have allowed us to provide this video for you and will continue to share uh, all of the awards as we move forward. So enjoy the rest of the video. I hope you have a wonderful evening and I look forward to seeing you in person soon. Thank you. Thank you, President Jeff Pollock. So let's get started. We are going to announce the top 10 winners in each category. Our first category is top 10 industrial landlord. At number 10, James Marsteller with Colliers International. At number nine, Pat Murphy with Cushman and Wakefield. We had a tie for number seven with Todd Barton and Mark Hawks with CBRE. And a tie for number five with Joseph Chris and Doug Smith of Seafree Properties Incorporated. Number four, Scott Plumgren with Colliers International and a tie for number two, Nathan Anderson and Darren Butler with NAI Brandon Goddard. And now our number one with 81 million in production, Brad Pope with JLL. Congratulations, Brad. Wow, congratulations, everyone. And now I have the honor of presenting the next category, our top 10 industrial tenant rep. Number 10, Ryan Sawyer with Colliers International. Number nine, Blaine Kelly with CBRE. Number eight, Tom Cromarty with CBRE. We have a tie for number six with Glenn Dyke and Brent Woodruff also with CBRE. Number five, Douglas Biggs of Colliers International. 
A tie for number three, Nathan Anderson and Darren Butler with NAI, Brandon Goddard. Number two, Stephen Bridges with JLL. And our number one, top industrial tenant rep with a total production in 2019 for $1.1 billion. Congratulations to Tony Capano with CBRE. Great job. Tony. Great job. That's awesome. It's my honor to recognize our newest members of the Million Dollar Club. This year, we welcome 40 first-time members and 18 first-time life members. Um, life members are those members who have qualified for five years in the Million Dollar Club. And now, the Rookie of the Year Award. This is an especially meaningful award to me as past chair of the Young Council of Realtors. It's a glimpse into the future of our industry and reflects not only who we are, but who, will we, who we will be. This award is presented to the YCR member who has produced the highest total volume in Million Dollar Club while only practicing real estate for three years or less. So please congratulate our Rookie of the Year and this year's winner of the Frederick Glass Award, Brian Batten with King Industrial Realty. Thank you so much, Heather, and congratulations, Brian. Well deserved. Our next category is Top 10 Land. This was an exceptional category this year with some significant land deals being completed. So let's get started with our Top 10. At number 10, Norm Ritchie with Batson Cook Realty. Number nine, Will Cobb, the Norton Commercial Acreage Group. Number eight, Scott McGregor with CBRE. We had a tie for six, Scott Cullen and Mark Lindenbaum with JLL. Number five, John Spiros with Ackerman and Company. Number four, Stephen Lovett, Norton Commercial Acreage Group. And a tie for number two, Glenn Dyke and Brent Woodruff with CBRE and our number one winner in the land category with over 111 million in volume is Stan Williams with NAI Brandon Goddard. Congratulations, Stan. Congratulations, everyone, as well. And now, the top 10 in retail. Number 10, Sarah Williams with JLL. Number nine, Coleman Morris with JLL. Number eight, Courtney Brumbelow of Ackerman and Company. Number seven, Matt Rotenstrick of Colliers International. Number six, Taylor Doiser with the Trilogy Group. Number five, Brian Levkoff with Ackerman and Company. Number four, Marissa Channon with Riverwood Properties. Number three, Spencer Bomar with Avis and Young. Number two, Amy Fingerhut, CBRE. And now number one producer in the retail category with over $49 million in volume. Congratulations to Chuck Evans with Trilogy Group. Congratulations, Chuck. I now have the honor of presenting the Phoenix Award, which represents members who have qualified for 10 years in the Million Dollar Club. Tonight, we honor 21 members who have achieved this distinction. Congratulations to Michael Beck, of Haley Realty Company, Jeff Bellamy of JLL, Stephen Bridges with JLL, Alan Clayton, JLL, John Cobb with Newmark Knight Frank, Brooke Dewey, JLL, Joe Grace, Cressa Global, Jim Jarrell, Brown Realty Advisors, Liz Love, JLL, Gray McWhorter with McWhorter Realty Partners, Preston Minning, Cushman and Wakefield, Scott O'Halloran, Scotland Wright Associates, Ann Olson with Coldwell Banker Commercial, Lisa Pittman with Cushman and Wakefield, Jeff Pollock, our 2020 president with Pollock Commercial, David Poe, La Vista Associates, Hansel Roddenberry with Cressa Global, Ellen Stern, CBRE, David Todd, CBRE, Rick Vaughn, Colliers International, and last but not least, Sarah Williams of JLL. Our next category, is the Silver Phoenix Award, which is presented to members who have qualified for 25 years in the Million Dollar Club. And we'll be honoring eight individuals who achieved this impressive distinction. Congratulations to Ron Chanan, Riverwood Properties, John DeCuto, Lee & Associates, Peter Glover, Cushman & Wakefield, 
Barry McWhorter, McWhorter Realty Partners, David Moline, Cushman and Wakefield, Brad Pope, JLL, David Tyler with David Tyler Realty, and last but certainly not least, Furman Wood with SK Commercial Realty. Hello, I'm John O'Neill with Cushman Wakefield, and I wish we were all celebrating together tonight, but thank you very much for your understanding. You know, as I think about uh, the Atlanta Commercial Board and what distinguishes it from other organizations, it's, um, it's the fact that it's just such a well-connected community. You know, the ACBR has a heart and soul. We work together, we negotiate together, and on occasions like this, you know, we celebrate together. But we also, at times, have to grieve together, and we've lost some of the most revered luminaries in this past year, and in particular, I want to pay tribute to the great Bruce Wilson, who was a dear friend of mine and mentor to me and so many others in the industry. We lost Bruce last June at the age of 85. And the Million Dollar Club um, established an award in Bruce's honor called the Bruce B. Wilson Diamond Phoenix Award. And it was to recognize 45 years of Million Dollar Club membership, which is an amazing accomplishment. And the ACBR put together a special tribute to Bruce and we'll be sending out a link uh, so everyone can see that soon. Last year, the ACBR um, honored only our second recipient of this award to another celebrated leader, Andy Gertner, from our very own Cushion Wakefield and one of the most influential mentors to myself and to so many in our business um, and a dear friend. So congratulations, Andy. This year, the MDC will award only our third Bruce B. Wilson Diamond Phoenix Award in our MDC history, a fact that gives me great comfort since it signifies that Bruce's esteemed legacy and his sterling reputation will endure and live on in all of us. And now it is my privilege to announce our third Bruce B. Wilson Diamond Phoenix Award winner to Leon Novak, founding member and managing partner of the Trilogy Group. Congratulations, Leon. And next we have our top 10 office landlord category. Congratulations to number 10, Austin Chase, with Atlanta Property Group. Number nine, Tom Miller with Newmark Grub Knight Frank. We have a tie for number seven, Jeff Keppen and Chris Port at CBRE. Number six, Jeff Bellamy with JLL. Number five, Kyle Kenyon with CBRE. Number four, Chris Aaronkeel, Seelig Enterprises. Number three, Brooke Dewey, JLL. Number two, Aileen Almassey, Cushman and Wakefield. And now, number one producer in the office landlord rep category with over $327 million in volume. Awesome. Congratulations to Adam Viente with JLL. Great job, everyone. Great job, Adam. It's now time to recognize our next category, top 10 office tenant. With number 10, Andy Lecter of Savills. Number nine, Ellen Stern, of CBRE. Number eight, Clinton McKellar, Cushman and Wakefield. Number seven, Rob Metcalf at JLL. Number six, Eric Weiss of Savills. A three-way tie this year um, for number three, Dave Demarest, Josh Hirsch, and Brandon Moss of JLL. And tied for first place in the office tenant rep category with over $469 million <laughs> in volume. Congratulations to John Schlesinger and Sam Holmes with CBRE. It's time for one of our most significant awards, the Alvin B. Cates Award. Alvin Bingham Cates was a legendary pioneer in the commercial real estate community in Atlanta. Born in 1887, Alvin began his career after graduating from high school, working with what would become the Adams Cates Company. As president of the growing firm, Alvin helped to establish the firm's reputation as a proving ground for talented brokers. Million Dollar Club Diamond Phoenix Award member Bruce Wilson remembers Adams Cates as the powerhouse firm in Atlanta. In an era when new broker training programs consisted of little more than a desk, a phone, and a telephone book, Adams Cates focused on building connections and grooming talent. Some of the most recognized and influential leaders in commercial real estate worked at Adams Cates, including many of you in this room tonight. In 1930, Alvin Cates served as the president of the Atlanta Board of Realtors. 
Several years later, he presented a sterling silver trophy to the Georgia Association of Realtors with the request that it be awarded annually to the member of the association who completed the most outstanding real estate transaction of that year. In time, large national and global brokerages would change the nature of our industry, but the Alvin B. Cates Award still serves as an ideal that we all strive for and embodies the spirit, vision, and character of the man for which it was named. First, let's take a look at the exchange at Gwinnett. Ackerman and Company represented by John Spiros and Larry Wood. Well, the, the site was very challenging physically, uh, mainly because it had about 80 feet of fall, uh, had extreme amount of rock, had three streams on it. Uh, there were access issues, there were sewer issues. So in addition to all the market issues which affect these types of developments, the, uh, the physical aspects of the property were very complex. Mall of Georgia, which is right across the interstate, was a mature mall. Everybody in the business almost was located there. So who's left if we were going to draw retailers to this site? And at that time, we were looking more at traditional development with the big retail boxes, the Dick's Sporting Goods, the Targets, etc. But those type of centers require you to basically flatten your site. And I realized it would just cost prohibitive to put that much money in infrastructure. So we looked for other opportunities and that's where the top golf play came in because it allowed you to develop it on two different uh, levels and save so much money in development cost. The main thing that came about was top golf people. We contacted them. So we were able to put together the top golf prospect. I brought rooms to go to the deal. They were enough to give the product, uh, project a boost uh, to give Jeff Fuqua enough ammo to go forward with the deal. I believe that this is going to be kind of the, the way malls were in the early 70s. It's a, it's a new concept, it's a place to go for entertainment, it's a place to live. Uh, today's retail is about experience. We buy so many goods online, it's about service and entertainment. And I think this is a, it really is a setting a standard for change in how projects are going to be developed in the future. Next up, is Spring Hill, Cushman and Wakefield, represented by Peter Glover and Dean McNaughton. Well, Service Corps International is the largest owner of funeral homes and cemeteries. I know in the United States and Canada, and I'm not sure if, if, it, if they are in the world or not. Doing relocation analysis for SCI because this, this particular funeral home is in Midtown. Midtowns are getting younger and younger and younger. We pretty much came to the conclusion that what they had available, Oglethorpe and Buckhead, and the one in Sandy Springs could handle everything that they were they were basically doing at that time. We lost a deal because we, we came up with that, but it was the right, right call. Our biggest obstacle that we had to overcome was historic designation. When you walked in it, when you walked in the building, it was so pretty and so, all the furniture and stuff, it was all definitely, everything in there was an antique. It affects it because if you didn't have to work around that building and you could just clean the slate, it'd be a whole lot easier. Uh, and I'm sure this is going to be a, a, a challenge when, when they do build around it. Every developer that we thought was, was able to do this, we had to send that to SCI. They vetted that and they let us know who we could take this back to. We wound up with Portman because of, Portman did the coded deal, the Crum and Forrester building next door to it was historic and they ended up having to build around that. They could probably just as easily build around uh, ours as well. We've got, a, uh, we've got a client that is very knowledgeable in real estate and very, very difficult. Uh, in other words, you've got to be able to get it exactly like he wants it done or, you know, it wasn't going to get done. We just worked hard to keep that relationship going. And our last finalist, Norfolk Southern CBRE, represented by John Schlesinger, Sam Holmes, Doug LeClaire, and Ellen Stern. Well, we have worked with Norfolk for a long time, however, had not done anything with them in the previous two years. When we received the phone call, it was out of the blue, and for the first time in my career, it's the first time a CEO actually came and saw me. They had been in talks with Cousins previously. Once the CEO found out that they were trying to self-perform, he, with advice from the board, realized that they needed a third party. 
the CEO of Norfolk Southern had released a capital plan to Wall Street. At that point, it didn't include any money for our new corporate headquarters. Norfolk Southern has traditionally owned everything outright. Jim Squires, the CEO of Norfolk Southern, said to us in the meeting and made very clear were two, two things. There cannot be a capital commitment on Norfolk Southern's part. And two, he thought that there would be a more cost-effective real estate strategy than traditional ownership as far as their headquarters were concerned. Given the constraint of not being able to put capital in the deal, uh, it really didn't work on a fee development standpoint. We worked out a transaction where Cousins acted as a fee developer. They also acted in a consulting capacity. There was the synthetic lease that had to be completed. Then you had two tax-free exchanges for the land uh, with money that came out of the gulch. On top of that, there was the sale of the 1200 Peachtree Building, which was 365,000 feet, and a three-year sale lease back on the 365,000 foot building. The move to Atlanta was twofold. It's a branding and retention with Georgia Tech and, and all the tech talent that's here. It's also a way for the bank for the for the railroad to move forward and kind of forge a new path in, in doing so in the city of Atlanta. Not only did we achieve an exceptional outcome for our client, but in my opinion, we achieved an exceptional outcome for the city of Atlanta. The city of Atlanta is gaining 900 executive level jobs. They're gaining a new Fortune 500 company that's headquartered here in the city. And this new development at Third and Ponce will be a critical link between Bank of America and Tech Square. I'm honored that I was allowed to work on something like this. It's one of those things that comes around once in a career. And the winners of this year's Alvin B. Cates Award goes to John Schlesinger, Sam Holmes, Doug LeClaire, and Ellen Stern at CBRE for the Norfolk Southern Project. Congratulations. We'll be delivering this Cates Trophy to your office soon where it can reside for the next year. Congratulations again. And now let's present our final category, and it's a big one, our final top 10 in investment. Congratulations to number 10, Shay Campbell with CBRE. Number nine, Kevin Geiger, CBRE. And in a tie for fifth place is Tyler Everett, Josh Goldfarb, Mike Kamether, and Bob Stickle of Cushman and Wakefield. A tie for number three, we also have Derek Bloom and David Gutting with JLL. And wouldn't you know it, we have a tie for first place in the investment category with a production of over $1.4 billion. Please congratulate Frank Fallon and Chris Riley of CBRE. On behalf of everyone at the Atlanta Commercial Board, we would like to say congratulations for all of your incredible achievements. Although this is certainly not the event we had envisioned, we also believe that we had to make the most prudent decision on behalf of our members. Thank you to our incredible sponsors. And thank you to everyone for your understanding and for your support um, and patience throughout this evening. I hope everyone has a wonderful 2020, even better than 2019, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night. Good night.